Hey, hey, guys, how's it going? This is Devo here. I'm very privileged today to have Anna, Hell, all the way from Russia, and of course, the impeccable Dr. D from Chaos Doctrine. And we are here to chat today a little bit about the upcoming release that uh, you may have seen on social media. You would have seen us do quite a bit of uh, buzz around this already. It is, of course, the blistering sophomore album coming out from Chaos Doctrine, 25 June. Make sure you get that date saved. But very special today, we're announcing for the first time that the next single, the third single coming up from the album, is going to be called Blood Serpent God. And in true spirit of what we've been doing with Chaos Doctrine over the last year, it features a fantastic guest artist, guest vocalist from bands like, you know, Theory X and more. And we will literally uh, go and delve more into that. Welcome, Anna. Welcome, Doctor. How's it going? Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you, everybody. So tell me, it's Hi, obviously guys. been quite a uh, dark for, 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 I mean, we've been pushing this new album forever. So this third single, Blood Serpent God, Anna, you know, uh, with all the bands that you're involved in, tell us a little bit how it got to be that you uh, featured on this track. It was really interesting, uh, you know, uh, fact like once a day, you know, like, because usually I'm very much on the social media these days because of pandemic and etc. And we don't have any gigs and we do all those recordings in our home. So like we don't go out. Yeah. So we're all like me and like guys from my band, they're all on the social media. And um, once I was just tagged uh, on Dr. Z's page <laughs> later on and I figured it out that uh, Kaz of Tuna are uh, looking for a, uh, for help uh, to um, for for their idea for a song, so uh, but it was not just kind of usual song. It it <laughs> it has a um, they wanted to uh, get the uh, the lyrics for that song, which is my father Grigori. You know what I, I can say it right now? Uh, it, oh, yeah. They wanted to uh, make a translation into Russian. So yeah, it was it was very unusual. Like yeah, and and it got me interested. Uh, so yeah, this, this is how we found, found each other. So it was pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. And doc, when you introduced this to me, I was also like, wow, you know, we've just come out of Jorgen featuring on, on, you know, Black Friday Bedlam and we back it up with something like this. It's like a, a freaking stream train. You know, this album is going to just demolish and abolish and just kill everything in its path. So, you know, um, how do you feel about this upcoming track? I'm super excited. I mean, Blood Serpent, Blood Serpent's been coming for a long time. Um, it was probably the first track we wrote for exclusively for this album. So Black Friday and another track called The Harlot was sort of old Chaos Doctrine stuff, which we rehashed. But Blood Serpent, Alec came up with, it sounded completely different. I had a stab at it and it became what it became. But uh, maybe just a step back, I think what's really exciting about Blood Serpent for me um, obviously, like Anna said, we had the chats about Father Gregory, and she said she knows a, a better guy for that track, which obviously <laughs> became the <laughs> meeting. Well, yeah, because like he, yeah, right. because he's more in, in in this. I don't know. Uh, I I know him for a very long time, and fifteen years or more, because we're in, like in a Russian on the Russian metal scene. We, you know, <laughs> obviously we know every every, every people because everyone know each other. Even if they we, we, didn't, we didn't meet or ever, but we did, we just heard about him. So like you know, like small, kind, of, kind of not a small, but the commun Russian metal scene community, you know. Yeah, and I just know, I just know him, and I know that he is very um, keen of keen of, the, of such themes, and he has a lot of uh, project that involves Russian lyrics and uh, and more. So yeah, so I decided just to, to <laughs> I felt that, that he he will be better for this. Yeah, and I hope you're, you're, you know, I hope you're happy with that. With that oh topic. no, yeah, yeah, no. I think Father <laughs> Gregory came out brilliantly. <laughs> it was I, amazing. He's, he's never, he's never told me how to pronounce it in Russian, though. I still need to go back and ask him. <laughs> but what I, but what I said to Anna when, when, when Demeter and I started working together, I said to Anna, even though he's doing this, I still want to do something with her, and. Um, I checked out some of some of her videos online and I was like, you know what, Father Grigori, ach, not Father Grigori, Blood Serpent God is going to be the thing. So I sent her the track and she was like, yeah, this is cool. 
And that's pretty much what happened. So yeah, we did that. And I, what a good couple of months ago, I think at the, yeah, at the end of 2020, she did the recordings for us, popped them over. And um, yeah, Alex has been putting them together and we're ready. We're ready to go. Fantastic, man. And obviously, Anna, I mean, recently we saw that you were voted in one of the top 10 lists of best female fronted, you know, metal bands. That, so, oh, what a combination that is to, to, to be featured on this album. You know, so tell us just a little bit about your, your own bands in Russia. You know, obviously we, we said we'd touch a little bit about that. So just for those guys that are not 100% familiar, just tell us a little bit about the bands that you are involved in there, there over in Russia. Oh, uh, for now, um, I'm still with Conflict, it's Russian industrial metal band. We do, um, just to get more familiar for everybody, um, so to get the idea of what we do, like, it's uh, it has kind of fear factorish arch enemy you know for those fans for um awesome. for instance yeah um but but we are like as, as a band where we have so very different tastes maybe some metal has and death metals will kill us but <laughs> you know because we we like a wide range of music like from i don't know a hardcore to jazz i know from i don't know from symphonic music i know even me from from uh, for trance music for tr electronic music so we yeah and we um and we decided to step step aside from what we did and um from, from the first album with me and decided to bring more jazzy elements more electronics elements to bring our own sound and we're thinking to do that maybe the the next album will be much more <laughs> different um from the previous and um, another project I decided to step in, like, of course, it, yeah, I think yeah, it was the, uh, the end of 2019 or, or in the beginning of 2020, um, when the pandemic started, well, yeah. Um, Nate, uh, he's the, uh, he's kind of, he's one man band. He's from States, from the United States. And he reached me out to, um, to be a guest vocal for his, for his new album. Um, I like um, I liked his ideas and I liked about the uh, ideas about talking about like lyrics that connected to space about a human about all those uh, well it has much more different elements from from what, what conflicts do but I'm, I was still keen for doing that because like um, I wanted to expand I don't know the range from for me as a uh, lyricist you know. I really liked his album, so he what he's doing. So yeah, I said yes. <laughs> so yeah, he, he and you've been doing some stuff with Theory X as well of late. I mean, you've you've just joined Theory X as well, not so. I think Sorry? recently. Uh, oh yeah, it's it just recently. It, it was the beginning of twenty twenty. It's, it's yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's here, oh, yeah. So you're busy, yeah. You're busy. You're very busy, and and obviously chaos is going to keep you busy with the launch of this. So what's what's your feeling and your take on this track? You know, did you enjoy working on it, from the the theme and the lyrics of it and the the, the whole sort of what it represents? You know, talk us a little bit about that experience of working with with Daniel and Doctor and and the whole chaos chaos crew. Yeah, it, it, you know, um, uh, there's kind of different. Uh, idea like i don't like i don't know the theme i don't know what, whatever like if i want if i want any song you know like if i have an idea and like, okay maybe today like um, right now I'll, i would like to sing a death metal song you know like i ha i'm i have this feeling that i i wanted to um get such experience you know and it's like it, it, it's clicking <laughs> and somebody is asking me for to be a guest this, this is how we just because I thought that we were just, I don't know, uh, maybe Dan just decided uh, to, uh, I know, just to get only Father Grigori and, and I really didn't have a thought that we will have more, uh, more something to get, to get together. And you know, like, I was thinking of that because I want a death metal song because we have more industrial, we have more electronic music going on, but I have something like you know, true, like what I, like because I'm an old, <laughs> I'm a true uh, death metal head. Uh, I started to uh, listen to death metal since I begin. I think about 40, 15 years already. You know, um, so yeah, it, yeah. It, and like <laughs> my my thought just got this realization, and 
because and I just felt this this track uh, really um, I know like mm, how to say like it has that energy that I, that I needed at that time you know even if I'm you say that I'm yeah I'm keeping busy because I like this I love this because it I don't know it's like every time when I do a song it gets me inspired to 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 get more songs I don't know to just it brings me energy. So this is why I said yes, and this is why I just got involved into this song. And Doc, from your side, tell us a little bit about more about Blood Serpent God. You know, what, what is it about? It's a very intriguing name. I mean, you and I had a lack of conversation about it recently, but I said to you, it sounds like a mystical kind of brew or like a, some kind of a... But, but for those guys that are hearing this for the first time, you know, just delve a little bit into what, what, what the hell is this all about? You know what? Dave, there's no short way to answer that 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 question, but I'm going to try. So if you look at our album cover, um, and in the beginning they lied, you'll see the tree in the middle, and the tree has the the human DNA helix, which becomes the snake. So at the top you also have the the dragons, which is really uh, Kukulkan or Quetzalcoatl from from South American myth or religion or maybe the truth. We don't know. So I the the, the album concept is really I guess because it's metal, everyone's going to assume it's about religion in a little bit. Yes, but it's really about um, there's a lot of stuff that happened in human history, which we can never know because some people in power somewhere along the line decided that the mass populace are not allowed to know this. Um, be it the Roman Catholic Church, be it whoever, politicians, um, or Constantine in whatever year that, that he decided he's a Christian now. I think that's when it started, right? So uh, <clears throat> Blood Serpent God really plays on the concept of, of, uh, of the South American religion. Obviously, the Mayans, the Aztecs, the Incas. Um, there's the, the, the concept of human sacrifices, obviously, in there, because you can't leave that out. This is death metal, after all. <laughs> but it digs a little bit deeper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know? So um, it digs a little bit deeper. If you read the lyrics, it's a little bit about... Um, you know, the concept of ancient aliens and genetic manipulation and where the human race really came from. So we're just exploring that theme a little bit where um, some of the other tracks on the albums go with some of the other themes. So um, I'm quite intrigued by the whole ancient alien theory. And I figured, fuck, if we're gonna, if we're gonna write a song about it, we may as well make it really metal, bring in the old snake <laughs> and add blood in front of it, you know? <laughs> so. <laughs> And Blood it's really allegor is allegoric, you know, it's really allegoric. Yeah, yeah. You, you even, exactly. Like, yeah, when you read the uh, the lyrics, you can think of, you can bring it to, uh, I don't know, to our society even, like, it, like, it takes many uh, and many layers, you know? Yeah, this exactly. is, these are my thoughts, that's what I saw from the lyrics. Oh, great. I guess that's the cool thing about lyrics, you know, everybody, I mean, I never... I never explained to Anna the whole story, but she made it come alive with her own personality and her own style, which is really, really cool. Obviously, when you go to read the lyrics on face value, it's very obvious what it's about. But when you look at some of the nuances, like in the chorus and how the last chorus changes from the first two choruses, you can see I'm trying to tell you a little bit of a story there. But like with good poetry, you need to leave that open for the imagination of the reader, you know? And and yeah. Chaos Doctrine has always been a very visual band, you know. Like you said, it, there's a lot of there's a lot going on there, which is why I love that Chaos Doctrines is also one of the bands that are still in a physical format. You know, the CD that you guys have just produced that is going to be released. There's a lot going in there, so I love going sort of through, you know, lying in my bed still listening to a physical copy, looking at all these yeah. images and and just you know it's, it stems back to the old days when album cover and the art was as important as the art in the visual as the art in the audio that you present you know as a package um but just yeah. just leaving a little bit for the imagination that you 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 go and wonder what is this all about you know um, exactly and something for me and i know also back to 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 sort of the beautiful russian language you know i just have to say that Daniel and, and all of us have had a conversation about this. You could say a phrase in English and you can say a phrase in Russian and it just sounds so kick-ass in Russian. So metal and Russian just is so awesome. When we look at, when we listen to Father Grigori for the first time from Dimitri, yes, I mean, it just, it made an already amazing song just like so much better, just that, that powerful, yeah. the powerful language, you know. 
Um, so visually, you know, that's something that transcends as well and, and metal transcends so well in all these languages. Is a language for you an important thing to sing in English or only in your own language, Anna? Or do you believe both is very important? Uh, well, my decision was uh, to sing mostly in English only because that uh, because English is very compact. You can say that in English or you the same phrase will take in Russian like that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, we, yeah. we realized that in the lyrics when we looked at that, it was like, wow, yeah, big phrase. Yeah, it's, 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 really, it's really hard. Even, even if, on example, if you write uh, lyrics in, uh, in Russian and then you translate it to, to English, on example, or anyone who want to uh, translate it to English back, you know, like to understand what it did. It, yeah, it, it become a little bit harder, you know, like because you don't, you don't see much connection sometimes. But really, we uh, well, um, the first album we had, we had prototype, uh, but but there was another singer. It was fully in Russian, and then guys they, they just they, uh, they they wanted me to sing in in, in Russian, another uh, song in Russian. But um, but that lyrics was pretty much uh, I don't know like um, not that compact, but uh, it really fitted the song. To my understanding, you know, uh, like there's not really big difference when you sing in any language, you know, like, on a, but you know, if, if we take path metal, on example, <laughs> when you growl, sometimes it's really, oh gosh, <laughs> you know, like, it really doesn't matter what language you're in. Mm, I don't know. Nowadays, it really depends on your own feelings, on your own, I don't know, um, on example, uh, if you heard about Korsk, uh, the Finnish band, they're the the guys and her guys from Finland, but but they what but they sing in Russian, you know. Like, I think it's my art preference right now. This is what I think. If you want to sing in Russian, you you can sing in Russian. It doesn't matter. Everyone are keen to listen to any language right now nowadays. Really, I, I think what's it's really, yeah. What's really interesting, Anna, is the impact of language on the engineering. I don't know if you found we, we had to mix Demeter's voice very different to ours, to, to mine, because of the sounds that you have in Russian. So Russian has a lot more like sh sounds well, yeah, um, than yeah. English does. So we had to mix a lot differently. And even when we did, um, we did one of our tracks, the genocide number in Afrikaans, which is my home language. And Demita actually said, no, man, this is way more angry than, than Russian. It sounds like <laughs> kind of like Rammstein, you know? <laughs> which is why we did it. We thought I've, I wanted to do thrash metal in Afrikaans, so we did it. Because that's, what's going, that's what Chaos Doctrine is all about. We wake up with an idea, we run with it, you know, and I, I love that about our band. There's no, we don't play only death metal, only thrash metal. We don't define our industrial that sounds like ministry or sounds like white zombie. We do whatever we want. And... I think that's the kind of the spirit that that I also see in Anna. It's like if I want to do Lana Del Rey, I'm gonna do it. If I'm gonna, if I want to do industrial, I'm gonna do it. You know, which which I heard recently. You, yeah, I enjoy the fun. silence that you made. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I did. Yeah. This, this is really. Yeah, I, I was just wow. They, yeah, this is <laughs> yeah. You know, and to that end, it, 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 it's. Time. It's testament when you see how many radio stations have been playing Enjoy the Silence, which is, I mean, I know it's crazy. let's be honest, it's a crazy, it, it's a thrash, it's an industrial track, and, and yet people have gravitated to that. Just like I also enjoyed that Lana Del Rey cover you did, Anna, it was, a, that was such an interesting choice of track, but yet it works. And I think that's something that I'm enjoying of, uh, you know, that a lot of people are commenting about the state of music these days, but one thing I do believe is quite important is that COVIDs have made people think outside the box because A, from a business perspective, yeah. you, you can't just make money out of touring. You've got to think of all the other places where you can go and generate revenue. And then creativity wise, people have reached out to each other. You know, if I look at the South African artists that have been representing all over the world in online fests, um, almost one weekly, you know, there's somebody that's playing somewhere and, and it's made the world come together much, much smaller. Um, so that's at least a good thing out of this whole horrific COVID situation is people have been expanding their thought patterns and, and delving into other creative ideas and genres. And, um, you know, so yeah, exactly. Kudos to, for instance, Enjoy the Silence that have, I think, introduced Chaos Doctrine to stations and radios and curators and playlists that would have otherwise probably been 
a little bit blindsided by the fact that it's thrash only, you know, or they might have listened to one of your other tracks and not given you a second thought. Um, yeah. So that's so important to do this. And, and that brings me to my next chat, collaborations and the importance of collaborations, because I think more than ever, artists need to reach out to each other, not in other languages and other genres and other territories, but just collaborate because it's so important to introduce each other. You know, there's this thing called common interest communities, which is what social media is all about. It's the fact people share an interest and because somebody, I mean, think about it back in the day when we were doing tape trading, what was it more than you taking an anthrax tape to your buddy and going, dude, listen to this shit, it's awesome. And of course you were buddies, you were friends. So he would put it in his cassette play, he would go listen to it because you recommended it. So there was a common interest. So this is very similar to breaking new grounds into other territories, you know? So Anna, how, how important do you believe these collaborations have been for you and getting your name out to places like South Africa on the other side of the world? Oh, that is really fantastic. Um, Cause an example, like about, I, I couldn't even imagine about 10 years ago, an example. If we, oh, and also if, uh, getting back to the, uh, to the collaboration and to the uh, to this uh, I don't know like uh, expanding our uh, areas and ranges in music you know like an you know, example like if you're a death metal or and you say okay I love death metal and it's all that I I love and if you, if you like I don't know, like Britney Spears at the same time you're not a true death metal <laughs> you're not you're not a true death metal for example and and yeah and right now like uh, in metal has uh, metal musicians they're expanding their uh, abilities expanding their I don't know I don't know it's like you know it's in the sake of heart like music is music you know even if every each person I know they have uh, I don't know mm, how can I how can I how to explain one example uh, there's such certain energy in every song and it depends on the person and it depends on the on the mood and like how you uh how you how your how your I don't know, how your spirit how your how you feel about this song and it really doesn't matter what kind of genre it is it's like because it's it's music you know and, and i really like uh collaborations uh i know <laughs> it, every time it's interesting experience every time you meet more people even if i'm staying here stay here in russia sometimes we don't have any uh abilities and, and or any finances to go abroad and to, to make some gigs only not in russia but for now on the social media you can do crazy things you can meet, meet new people even like we are right now. Get like you're in South Africa. I'm here in Russia in my at my home. I know it's no, it's it's crazy and it's really beautiful at the same time. And I'm really happy when I have collaborations with different people. It gives me a a huge experience and it, and it really empowers me as a musician because sometimes yeah we don't have gigs. We don't have I don't know. Um, sometimes we write material for a very long time. And you're getting getting into this, and you're stuck into it. And when you got out, of it and you say like, "Yeah, I'm really exhausted." And when somebody or like like them, they, they wrote me, "Do you want to participate? Do you want to be a guest vocalist?" And I say, "Yeah, of course. Like, I like the track, and I want to do this." Yeah. And I think what's also going to be so cool is whenever this COVID situation is over and, you know, these the, the, the bonds and relationship and collaborations that have established, I think is going to lead to a whole new generation of touring, you know, because chaos needs yeah. to come to Russia. You need to come to South Africa. Uh, you all yeah, guys need yeah, to yeah. go to freaking Vakun, wherever, you know, it's it's something that is that needs to happen, you know. So I think this this kind of creative period is going to lead to some very interesting touring soon. So, d yeah, Doc, yeah, yeah. I want to ask you about the video, Doc. Um, the video treatment that, 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 you know, for those guys that don't know, Phil in the band is, is one of the big sort of visual drivers. He's the man that puts all this creative taste and ideas to the forefront. So the video we're going to be launching at the same time as the single and obviously at the same time as the album. And of course, guys, save the date. Chaos is going to do an album launch party on the 26th, the day just after at AJ's Pub. Make sure you get there. There's going to be all kinds of surprises and good things. But um, from a visual treatment, um, what can the guys expect a little bit from a visual element to Blood Serpent God? Yeah, it's actually, it's, this video was quite interesting. I actually, we, we gave Phil off 
on this one. <laughs> Phil has been doing so much visual work um, for us, obviously. Uh, since the beginning, he, Phil designs our album covers. He does all our videos. It's all over. Um, exactly. So for, for Blood Serpent God, I said to Phil, dude, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you a pass on this one. <laughs> so we actually spoke to we spoke to a guy's company. is called Insta Good Promotions. He is in... Wow, I can't remember the name of the place now. It's one of those names you see in the Bible, like Damascus. So, so I can't remember, but I'll wow. I'll tell you, and we can we can put it on the on the liner <laughs> notes of this video. Um, one of the old USSR um, republics that became a that became a, a country post, you know. And wow, my mind just escapes me. But I said to him, you know, he, he does a lot of sort of zombie work and a lot of weird, like, gaming type of footage. And I spoke to him and I said, hey, do you want to do something different? Do you want to want to do something sort of like seriously death metal? And he was in and he was such a good guy. I think the video that we're airing is probably version 23. Because Dave, <laughs> you know what I'm like. I am super <laughs> anal. I am a complete control freak. So the poor guy, he just, he was like another version it's fine it's good my bro and he did it for me and um i think the video just really really touches on the surface of the story we spoke about earlier you know it goes for the the overtones but look carefully and you'll you'll see the undertones are very clearly in there yeah not that phil couldn't have done it but i really just wanted to give him a break from from staring at a video screen you know Oh, well, fantastic. He's done such a great job thus far in terms of everything. And and certainly, you know, then, you know, it's just the other thing that I wanted to touch on in conclusion, you know, just sort of before we wrap up our conversation today, guys, is uh, the, the importance of also we've chatted about collaborations, but also the, the re release cycle of things have become, you know, people have cottoned on to the, the power of releasing single video, single and like you've been doing a little bit of like a collaboration or an alternative version and then single single before you know it was always this two year cycle where a band would release an album and you would hardly see them because they're on the road touring it to death you know and we've not been able to do that so obviously the the industry has started gravitating to this notion of releasing a lot of singles and some bands don't even do what you do and collate it into an album at all at the end of the day they just leave those singles and it's like a concession of singles that becomes a volume of work over time, you know, and that's something that you've done extremely well. And Anna, you do very much the same on your side. So that's, that's a very good common ground between the bands. Do you believe this is something that, that you're going to continue doing into the future, the single, 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 and then at some point sort of the, the volume, or, or do you think you're going to return back to sort of album, album cycle at the end of this whole crazy COVID time? Hmm. You know, um, like uh right now like these years i know probably this um this kind of uh releasing from tense for a couple of years maybe more about three years already because it's not even about the pandemic you know um there's there's tons of music out there and sometimes audience uh, any audience they're just tired of waiting for something from you or probably yeah, we just we have a lot of honest responses that okay, guys, there's already two years from your album, you're going to release more. So yeah, like um, it's it's really good way to uh, I don't know to uh, to get your to get your audience involved during this time before the, before the album. So this it's really good idea about that. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, I think because sometimes it's really hard to uh, to bring more news to your audience or the people uh, who uh, really care about your art. Um, I think that, yeah, really uh, like single releases are a very good idea. I do but make them feel part of the journey, you know, that you take them on your yeah. journey because every yeah. and you keep them entertained. I think that's something we've seen very much in Chaos Doctrine is like almost you keep them at the edge of their seat because there's always something new coming, you know, and that's something that yeah. you share. You both share, you know, as artists, Doc, Doc and, and, and Anna, you both, both crazy busy. There's always something happening and you've never released yeah. something without yeah. having, 
<laughs> I mean, Doc and I, uh, I mean, Doc, you sent me that crazy text the other day where chaos is already planning up until the end of next year. You know, it's almost a roadmap planned out of craziness. <laughs> 2023. <laughs> 2023 is already mapped out, you know. So, so for those guys that are, <laughs> that think that we've just kind of finished slapping them with a new album, hang on, wait until you see what's planned, you know. And, and also, you know, you keep them entertained. Anna, on your side, I, it means people have got something to look forward to. You know, it's like... You know, if anybody at the end of this COVID period like, like kind of thinks that art is not important, go think at the, the months that you were sitting in lockdown with nothing else to do than listen to music or watch a video or play a game. I don't think any of the world will ever look at content creators and artists and, and cherish and value their contribution less because it has been the soundtrack not just to our lives when we grew up, but it's been the soundtrack to the fucking apocalypse, let's be honest, which we are living almost <laughs> through right now. <laughs> you know? um, but anyway, before we wrap up, thank you so much for your time, Anna, and thank you, Doc. Anything that you guys want to share with everybody in passing, you know, just sort of, uh, oh, sorry, not in conclusion, um, you know, before we sort of really get everybody belted up and ready for Blood, Serpent, God and the new album. Dave, I think the first thing we need to say is we need to uh, start one of those funding campaigns so we can get Anna to Joburg. And uh, then the second funding campaign will be to get my ass to Moscow. But in the summer, please, I don't think I can survive a fucking Russia. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was free just that it just started like in the beginning of May, okay? <laughs> we had we had snow in April. <laughs> Exactly. It's winter here right now. Look what I'm wearing. You know, there's no heating in this room. None. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But and I, I just, I think I've said this to you. Thank you. I, it was so much fun working with you and I, I can't wait for the next one. You know, maybe, maybe it will be a cover. Maybe it will be a ballad. Maybe it will be thrash metal. Maybe it will be industrial. We don't fucking know. We'll see when we get there. Right. So uh, just, you know, Chaos Doctrine fans, this is Anna Hill and Go play the fuck out of her tune. She is amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you uh, for this such great opportunity to uh, to become part of death metal um, song, you know, like, and cherished my idea <laughs> to get into yeah. it. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much for such opportunity. And um, really, guys, please stay safe out there. And during this pandemic, uh, be healthy. Uh, try to... Uh, we are artists. We we bring we bring our songs our songs into our, into the world. So we we gotta get get safe. But um, yeah, um, I really uh, I really do believe that music uh, keeps us sane. Everyone's sane during this time. So it's really important to uh, to keep up for everyone. So music saves. Thank you yeah. guys. I think I'm so lucky. I got to spend. I did, I did the initial mix of Anna's vocals. Obviously, Alec does all the stuff, but I did the initial mix because I wanted to own that shit, you know. I got to spend hours with headphones with Anna shouting my lyrics at me. <laughs> it was so much fun. She sent me, she's a control freak like me, clearly. She sent me like so many files and I got to blend them and mix them and then put them in with my vocals. It was so much fun. So I can't wait to do it again. Yeah, awesome. we had fun, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. For everybody out there, again, save the date. Blood Serpent God, single and video coming 25 June. New album, and in the beginning they lied. Go check it out. AJ's Pub launch party the 26th of June. Thereafter, watch out world, because these guys are going to fucking destroy. Yeah. Woo. Thank you. <laughs>